going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Monday. That's right. Back on the grind. Are we still here? Are we still doing this every single day? Are we not millionaires yet? Come on, Bitcoin. Well, actually, Bitcoin is doing quite well today. It's up 1.9%. You can see a lot of the altcoins are still actually in the red. I know, I know, for us out there that are holding altcoins, kind of sucks, but does this mean that this is the death of the altcoins? No, it does not mean that. It just currently means that Bitcoin is the focal point and Bitcoin is leading the way. So I would definitely still keep our eyes on Bitcoin, but we do know if Bitcoin goes sideways for extensive periods of time or has a slow retracement backwards, then all coins do tend to do well. We're going to look into that. We're going to talk about what's going on. We're going to talk about these new price predictions and where we could be going. And I also want to talk about some pretty interesting signals that are showing us that this rally is just getting started. And if that sounds good to you. Well, you know what to do. And if this is your first time checking out the Crypto Zombie channel and you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? We do this every single day. Also, today is uh, the lucky day for somebody because we are giving away a Ledger Nano S. You know, all you got to do is comment on literally any video throughout the course of the week and you are eligible for the Ledger Nano S giveaway. Now, really quick, just switching over to some serious talk for about five seconds. This is going around from Binance. It is some email that is showing up in, in certain people's uh, uh, inboxes. I don't know who they're targeting specifically, but this is not Binance. They have not been hacked. And it says that it says that they have been hacked. And in order to protect your funds, you need to send your Bitcoin to this address. It's clearly a scam, guys. So just don't fall for that. Wanted to just let you guys know, okay? Now, having a look at what's going on in the markets, let's give it a quick refresh live. We have Bitcoin dominance at 59.2%. Now, we said if we really wanted to see those altcoins start to rally, we would need to see Bitcoin come down a little lower to around 50%. So right now, you could tell that Bitcoin is definitely primarily right now leading the markets, okay? So if we scroll down here, you notice that we do have sort of a mix. If we switch it to the Bitcoin comparative... Yeah, there's a lot more red, okay? So that is just something that we've been looking at uh, moving forward. Now, there are some gainers today. For example, Lambda is up 40%, Hedge Trade 25%, Eternity 14%. We have Nebulous, Educare, BitShares, Odom, IOST, Omizego, Tron, Dent. So we do have some altcoins doing well today. So that is to be noted. We are noticing that the Fear and Greed Index is still very, very, very high right now. If that's something that concerns you, we were very, very high uh, yesterday, 84. As you can see right here, we actually had a peak. I, I, thought we hit, uh, I thought we hit 86. I guess 84 was the highest, but you could definitely see that this is uh, its pretty high, guys. It's pretty high. So having a look over here, if we look at the markets, <laughs> we have buys. Look, people are buying on Binance, buying on Bitfinex, Bitthumb, Bitflyer. So, and if we look over here, actually this morning, the shorts were were leading, and now it looks like it switched back over to the longs, 50.12%. So looks like people are bullish on Bitcoin today. So we're going to see what's going on. I mean, you know, are we still expecting this massive 30 to 40% drop? Guys, it's possible, but the trend is your friend until the end. And currently, until we do have that massive sell-off, you know, we can only go off of what we have. So obviously, having a look at what's going on, we're, we're you know, we're not in the red zone. We talked about that. That if we, if we were to close the CME futures gap, we would need to come down to about 7,200. But that is to close all the gaps. I'll get into that in just a second. But you can see right here, we're clearly above all of the... Um, Everything on the EMA ribbon, starting with the 20 all the way down. So this is great. This is very, you know, bullish, obviously. And this is on the lower time frames. And, I, and I'm sure if I zoom out, we're definitely well above it. And you can see right here, Bitcoin's actually started to sort of follow this new trend line that it's formed. You can see every time we touch this point, we kind of just, you know, keep having that support. So currently, I mean, we don't have much to go off of. You know, we broke through. There's really not much on the charts to look at. But you can see that so far we have continued upwards here. So there is a potential that... um you know, maybe by June 28th, we could have a massive breakout. Uh, but you know how Bitcoin is. It usually tends to break out sooner than later because it is impatient. So I would assume that before June 28th, we'd have another massive move. Now, obviously, the main question being to the upside or the downside. Guys, we've gone over this many, many, many times. I highly suggest you just watch yesterday's video. Uh, I go into all the different levels, you know, one of them being this uh, low of 7,200. Obviously, we have the if, you, if you're going to be super bearish, we could potentially go down to 6,400, which is where we we originally broke through with that high VPVR, but 
I don't see it being that bearish anytime soon. So obviously coming over here, let's talk about some of the key levels that we do have to break. Let's look at the positive side of things, right? Of course, I could put this video out and we could, Bitcoin could totally crash, but let's have a look at some of these levels that we need to break. So obviously we broke above this $8,800 level and the next one was the 9,900, the one that was sitting just below 10. We're above that. We're good. We're in, we're in, we're in good, good waters right now. I don't think that's a term, but anyway, so the next levels that we need to look to get above is this $11,700 level. The reason being is it provided some key resistance, but also support during the entire bull and bear market. So it really was a pretty, pretty important, uh, pretty important area. You can see right here on December 3rd, we had difficulty breaking above it. We wicked back down. Finally, when we did break above it, though, I will say this, we just skyrocketed to the moon. I mean, we had some we had some crazy days right here. And then as we started to come back down, you could see that it provided support on December 22nd. It provided support on Christmas, <laughs> December 25th. It also provided support on December 30th. And once we finally fell through it, because you know, the more times you tend to hit something, it eventually weakens it. Well, that support then became resistance on January 27th uh, through 29th, again on on February 20th and then again on March 5th. So you could see the significance and the importance of $11,700. I don't think that we're going to break through this $11,700 uh, level um, as easy as we think we are. Okay. It's actually a little higher. It's, you know, you can argue it's a range. If you, if you kind of look at it, some, sometimes it's kind of closer to, uh, 11,800. So let's just say that range between 11,700 and 11,800. Okay. Just to kind of like give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room, right? Once we get above that, well, you can see there's not much holding us back. And then the next key level, I mean, if you really want to look at it, we had one, two, three, four resistance here at, at 17,000. So 11,700, is the first one. 17,000, uh, 17,100 is the second one. And after that, guys, it's 12K. That's it. That's all we're looking at. There's not much more to go on. So those are the key levels that I am keeping my eyes on. And the interesting thing that I want to point out, though, is once again, going back to this whole Bitcoin is a crappy store of value thing. You guys, you've seen my chart with the blue area and the red zone, right? Obviously, if you bought Bitcoin, like what, 90 8%, 99% of the time in the past, uh, you know, 10 years, you'd pretty much be up with the exception of this box right here. And you could see as soon as we got pretty much, we've only been above the $11,700 level for 48 days. You can see right here, 48 days. So just slightly over a month, okay? A month and a half, roughly. We stayed above this level. So we really haven't spent a lot of time here. And as soon as we do get above this, we're entering into uncharted territories, guys. I mean, Anything can happen. Literally anything. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, we could, I don't want to become like a crazy moon guy, but I mean, we, we could go to 40K, you know, 65K. What is stopping us at that point? You know what I'm saying? And we, and the thing is, is we don't even have the interest yet. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. And I know what you're saying. What do you mean we don't have the interest? People are interested. Let me show you what I'm talking about in just a second. But I do want to just really quick, because I, I don't want to be a moon Lambo guy. I want to I wanna be realistic and I want to talk about it. So if we were to close these CME gaps, and let me, just for anyone that's new, let me show you what, exactly what I mean. So... Okay, the CME futures closes, right? You can see right now, look above me. It says delayed. You see that right there? Delayed. Now, the, you know, something like Binance is 24-7, but, you know, this market opens and closes. So sometimes it has gaps because things happen when the market's closed. So you can see back here on May 10th, we jumped, right? And we had this gap. Well, we came all the way up here, all right? And then on May 16th, look, we wicked right here, all the way down here, okay? And that's this, this green arrow. And what did we do? We filled the gap. You see what I'm saying? This was an empty gap. This came down. We filled it, okay? Then we had another one right here on May 24th. We hopped up here, right? We came sideways and look, boom, we had this drop right here. So this drop filled this gap. See what I'm saying? Okay? So now if we look over to this one, we still have this little area that never got filled back from May 17th. You see right here on, on June 4th, we started to come down. We wicked, but we stopped right here and we never actually filled the rest of the box. We had a similar situation that happened over here on June 14th and another similar situation that just happened over this weekend. So we are looking to potentially come down and fill this box, which would bring us down to 10,000. If we were to fill this box, we'd have to go to 8,500. And of course, down to the very, very bottom would be 7,000. 
$200. And the only reason that I have this green line right here is because we were discussing a potential chance for a 30% pullback. And if we did, well, actually, we've gone a lot higher since then. So yeah, we're probably not going to go down that low, but it was 30%. Now, if we were to go to that level, it'd be 37%. So I don't know, guys, keep your eyes on it. Do you think we're even going to fill these gaps? I mean, seriously, everyone's talking about it. What do you guys think at this point? Because, you know, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Do you think we're just not going to fill these? I don't personally know. I mean, if Bitcoin just continues to go upwards and we don't have a pullback, we don't have a correction, then maybe we won't. And this could be an anomaly. And then that'll definitely, you know, it would be good data to add to the data set that way. No, gaps don't always get filled. And I would like to see a negative, right? It'd be nice. It'd be nice to see a gap not get filled. So then we could say, well, then they don't always get filled. And then that would be something that we could... I guess, sort of mentioned next time. You could also see Crypto Fib, uh, he talked about it here as well. Now, this is the other thing I wanted to point out. If we come over to Coindesk, you could see they say that Bitcoin appears to be pow uh, powering to the best second quarter price gain on record and the best quarterly performance overall since late 2017. So the 165% gain on April 1st, opening price of 4,092 is the biggest percentage rise observed in May to June to date. They also say that Bitcoin's triple digit gain so far for Q2 is the best quarterly rise overall since the fourth quarter of 2017. So that's definitely worth mentioning. Now, something that some people have been bringing up is the fact that Bitcoin is being searched more now, again, on Google. You guys remember what the chart looked like when people were, you know, Googling Bitcoin on the all-time high to 20K. The chart actually looked pretty much exactly like the Bitcoin chart. But if we come over here, you can see that it is starting to go up again. Now, I want to zoom out, though, because before we get ridiculously excited. Let's just zoom out, okay, and look at the past five years. And you can see right here, we are nowhere, we are nowhere near the height that we had during the major, major bull run of 2017. So, I mean, what we're getting excited for right now is literally this little blip right here, okay? So, you know, I don't want to jump the gun right now, but some people are saying that this is a good thing. But also the other thing I want to point out too is the fact that we're halfway back to the all-time high and this is the interest on Google. Now, you can argue that, well, people aren't searching for it because now they know, right? They didn't know about it then, now they know about it. So that's a possibility. But you can see over here, some of the arguments on Reddit and I just want to entertain these because this is what the community is talking about. They say that we're only at 50% of the previous all-time high. If this is another big bubble event, we are in the extremely early stages. Only people already in crypto care about this right now. It's interesting to think about how many new people are actually in the space. How many people do you know that are brand new that are just getting in it for the first time? Are you being called by all your relatives or is it a little different this time around? Or are you new to the space? I'd be curious. Let me know. Actually, let me know. I'm going to drop it above. Actually, how long have you been in the space? I'm going to drop a poll above. Let me know. And uh, I'm curious to just see if I have any newer viewers out there. But they say, if you were watching closely, the beginning of this run began almost precisely when Fidelity announced that they would be rolling out Bitcoin custody for select clients in mid-March. This is not a herd-driven pump. It's a purely institutional, and even in small minority of institutions, Fidelity rolled out their Bitcoin to just five clients. So just think about that. So they say just wait until uh, late summer when you have Fidelity going live, you have Backed going live with their beta, you're gonna see Goldman Sachs, JPM, they're all gonna be forced to satiate their own clients' demands for crypto. And I think you guys know what's gonna happen after that. And you can see right here, Google search interest is very low, which tells Tells us retail investing is not even here yet. The media hype cycle has not yet begun and volatility is just starting to pick back up again. So why am I bringing this up? Well, because there's a lot of new people to the channel and a question that I get is, am I late to the party? Is it too late to buy Bitcoin? Did I miss out? Did I screw up by not buying at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? thousand dollar Bitcoin. Well, I mean, if you sat back and didn't buy that, that does suck. I'm sorry to hear that. We do talk about dollar cost averaging, but let me show you something. Okay. First of all, I just want to break this down really quick. Okay. This is, you can see right here, the world's first mobile phone was made on April 3rd, 1979 when Martin Cooper, a senior engineer at Motorola called a rival telecommunications company and informed them he was speaking via a mobile phone. Now look at this thing right here. Look at that brick. Look at that brick, right? You know, compared to, you know, something like this right? So here's the thing. I remember, 
Uh, well, I don't remember because I wasn't actually alive in 1973. But you did hear a lot of skepticism, right? People were like, who's going to use this thing? The battery life is terrible. This gigantic block. Like, who's ever going to carry a phone around with them everywhere they go, right? This thing will never work. Uh, well, now we have smartphones. So you guys can see technology always in the beginning, you know, seems a little weird, right? The internet. What is internet, right? Why would we ever use email? That's ridiculous when I could just mail it physically. I remember people saying, well, we're going to, we're going to, all meet up virtually on a virtual chat room and well, you know come on guys Facebook hello <laughs> so let me just break it down to all my friends out there that have not seen this chart yet if you have seen this chart and you've been a, you've been following the channel for a while feel free to just skip this segment I do have timestamps below but you can see right here cryptocurrency so at the moment of at the time of making this they had Bitcoin at around a hundred billion it's about twice as much so basically this little cryptocurrency just double the size okay but for the most part let me it's it's relatively still accurate okay Look at silver, look at crypto. These are the biggest companies in the world. This represents the 50 richest people, California's GDP, the Fed's balance sheet, currency, gold, stock markets, okay? Global money supply, global debt, global real estate, derivatives. <clears throat> this one goes on for quite some time. Still going. And uh, yeah, and yep, Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin, guys. Let's actually double that size now. So, so make two of those squares. But um, yeah, so you could see uh, we're still quite early, guys. So if you're sitting there and you're asking yourself, am I too late to the party? Does it look like you're too late to the party? Bitcoin has a long, long, long way to go. If we were just simply to reach the market cap of Bitcoin or <coughs> Bitcoin of gold, then Bitcoin would be well over 330K. In fact, gold is up today, so I think it would be even higher than that, okay? So just pointing that out. And yes, our favorite perma bull Tom Lee says, just an observation, but if Bitcoin reattains its all-time high this year, it is only 18 to 20 months from prior high. When a market reattains a high so quickly, one could argue that the prior high was not a bubble after all. And I just wanna entertain this because it's fun. Now, this is a little bit old. This was made back in May, but it still holds true. If we were to take Bitcoin and actually just look at yearly candles, right? So we can look at, we can look at daily, we can look at weekly, monthly. We're going to look at yearly candles. Bitcoin has only had two red candles. And here's the thing. We are definitely on an up trend. As you can see, for the most part, we continue to put in higher lows, which is the most important thing, as you can see right here. We actually didn't this year, which is interesting, even though we were still up 34% from the time before, but you can see higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, and I believe that was also a higher low. So that is a very positive thing. So, I mean, you, could, you can entertain it any way you want, but guys, I think the big elephant in the room, the real reason why Bitcoin is pumping is because the original singer of the Pokemon song is back with a <laughs> crypto version. This is the original guy, by the way. <laughs> All right, I can't play too much of it because I'm sure this is copyrighted, but yeah, definitely check this out. The original guy that did the original uh, theme, he's back, and he's and it's a Bitcoin parody. Do not cash your Bitcoin. Hoddle them, hoddle them. So that is really cool. Check that out. Also, I wanted to talk about an interesting thing. So you think that when countries ban Bitcoin, that's a bad thing, right? Well, India's crypto ban has triggered a massive Bitcoin price premium. Check this out. Scrolling down here, look at this. As a result of the ban or whatever the heck is going on, I don't really, I don't really 100% understand what's going on in India. Uh, can someone out there that is, that is from India give me a clear uh, understanding? Because every time I read the news, like it changes. But essentially, regardless, as a result, you could see that they do have premiums ranging from five to thirty percent. Even CZ says the more it's banned, the more people want it. So when the Bitcoin price peaked at $11,200 on the 22nd, uh, trust nodes actually said that it was trading around 11700 in India with a $500 premium. So they banned it, but now they're paying more for it. So you could see what happens. You can't ban Bitcoin. It's not bannable. You cannot ban a blockchain, guys. This is the same thing when I get questions with people saying, oh, I'm a U.S. citizen. I can't use Binance Dex. Why? You can't use the website without a VPN, but you can't block a blockchain. You can't 
That's the whole idea, guys. I mean, maybe certain permissioned ones, uh, you know, Libra, but definitely not Bitcoin, guys, all right? So just pointing that out. And also Dovey Wan, she's the founder and partner at Primitive. She said that Bitcoin is now trading with a 30% premium in Iran's OTC market. So she's saying that this is obviously showing a very uh, big demand from investors as well. So go ahead, guys, ban Bitcoin. You're just going to increase the price, right? We Look what China did. When China had the, the China FUD, Bitcoin, that was one of the first times we had to deal with it. It fell like 50%. Everyone was freaking out. And within like two weeks, we were like well above where we were before that. So yeah, I'm not really worried about these bands. I do think that these guys need to get on the wagon. But I have to say, I love seeing, uh, what is this guy's name? I forget his name, Joe, Joe Kernan from Squawk Box. So I love seeing guys that like, are really just sort of warming up to this stuff for the first time and they're getting all excited and they're getting so passionate over it. And I just wanted to show you uh, basically what he had said right here um, about it. Uh, it was actually talking about Facebook coin and, and stuff, to but dictate, let me show you what he said. You know, how did the corporations and, and the people involved get all the float, uh, number, number two. I, I mean, I, I've seen it said like this, Bart, that fiat currency is, is currency for, for governments. Uh, Libra is currency for corporations. Only Bitcoin is corporate is currency for pe for the people for the people themselves. I'm feeling like a you know like an evangelist almost, but is that <laughs> Bitcoin is for the people? I'm feeling like an evangelist, so that was pretty awesome. Now, Peter Brandt, what's going on? Yesterday, this guy comes out. He's talking about 100k Bitcoin. And now he's saying the obnoxious Twitter millennial index, which is clearly not a real thing, is reg is registering extreme FOMO. That is always a sign to consider taking some money off the table. I mean, if you're listen, if you're going to be like day trading, then sure, maybe you could. But I mean, for me, it's just too crazy. I mean, I'll, I'll you know, if you're doing um like longing or shorting on on Bybit or something like that, that's one thing. But actually going on exchanges and like having sell orders and buy orders, then you got to actually keep your keep your money on exchanges. That's not really for me. But you can see down here, Galaxy says not selling. Moon Overlord says, yeah, it's definitely millennials and their $100,000 of student loan debt buying $50 of Bitcoin on Cash App with their paycheck and not the CME institutional money doing all the high volume. Ain't selling until 65. How ironic. Okay. And um, who was it down here? It was, um, yeah, it was, uh, hold on. Oh, it was way up here. Crypto Wolf, I like what he said. Yeah, uncle, same falling wedge of 2015, same wave to the 38.2 fib. So if you could see right here, um, that's actually showing us being bullish. So I don't know. I mean, that still looks like we're going up, guys. But Bitcoin is set to add trillions in value. Now, this is according to Glenn Chambers. He is chief executive of online blockchain PLC, which if you're not familiar with them, they trade on the London Stock Exchange alternative investment market. And he agrees that there will be cycles of boom, bubble and bust. And there is another boom bubble part of that. How high we're going to go is anyone's guess. But he says that we are going to go above the previous all time high. He says the whole cryptocurrency space is still only just the size of a single NASDAQ blue chip. Let that sink in. So there is still so much time to go. So no, you're not late to the party, okay? Dollar cost averaging is your best friend. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. And actually, um, if you Google, if you look up Bitcoin for beginners, he's my buddy Kevin. I don't have it pulled up right now. He did a video on dollar cost averaging and he proved that if you dollar cost average Bitcoin, I think he used either 10 or $50 as an example, every single week, starting at the all time high. Starting, like say you bought at the very top, he says you would still be doing very well. So definitely do not rush in, do not, you know, use the rent money to buy Bitcoin, but dollar cost averaging is always a good strategy. Now that's enough. We need to talk about some coins and get on out of here because this video is already going on for way too long. So you have Seattle based Stably. They have their stable USD that has been listed on Binance DEX as a native BEP2 crypto asset. So we have a stable coin that is a BEP2. So this is good. They say that the addition of this opens up uh, opportunities for on-chain trading on the DEX, provides traders with an additional tool for hedging against volatility or redeeming their crypto for fiat. So there's a lot of stable coins out there, guys, but it's good. It's good. Options are good. You know, it's healthy. You want healthy competition. You don't want a monopoly, right? We don't want that. We want to be decentralized. So I'm actually glad to see this, and this is going to be very good for people trading on Binance DEX. Also, we have some XRP news. SendFriend is launching today in New Jersey. The next generation remittance company provides a cheap way for overseas Filipino workers to send money to the Philippines, securely transferring dollars to the Philippine peso at the lowest rate 
possible. Also, guys, friendly reminder, Fleta Chain will be listed on GDAC on June 27th. I believe that's Thursday. Um, Pre-mining registration is already open and there will be an airdrop event where you can receive as much as up to 22%. So if you guys don't know what Fleta is, you've never heard about it before, I actually had an opportunity to interview them on the channel. So I will drop that above if you are interested. But that being said, guys, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a little rough for the altcoins right now. It's a little rough. We're going to keep it. By the way, I don't know who made this meme. It's supposed to be here's Johnny, but we'll let it slide. So anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to keep our eyes on the altcoins. Like I said, right now, all eyes are on Bitcoin. That's just the way things are. You have all these institutions coming in. You have Fidelity. You have Backed. Um, yeah, just a lot, a lot of focus on Bitcoin right now. So I really do believe when the rush comes in, I do think it's going to start with Bitcoin. And then if you sort of look at the ones that are on, you know, Coinbase and stuff like that, it might trickle down to like, you know, Ethereum, Litecoin, EOS. Well, EOS is, uh, I can't trade that, but some people can. New York State residents. Oh, always, always a pleasure. <laughs> so yeah, but you know what I'm saying. And then I think it will eventually trickle down into the lower alts. Let's have a quick look. All right, guys. So we're, we're still totally maintaining this trend line. So like I said, you know, if we were to fall, we could potentially be supported by any of these EMA ribbons, or we might be supported by this trend, or we may have to fill the dreaded CME gap, which you guys know we will talk about. But no, I did not forget about the Ledger Nano S giveaway. This is the second giveaway we've done. So we need to pick a random winner. So we had seven videos last week, starting with Monday. So we have to go over here, put in seven, generate number two. So that is Tuesday's video, which is why Bitcoin will continue to rise. Kind of stay range bound. The real reason, what is this? The real threat of Facebook's Libra, which we know the real threat is the banks, not Bitcoin. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. Let's, uh, let's, give, let's give someone a ledger today. 609 unique comments. All right, drum roll, please. <laughs> Millennial Sage, this vid gave me a boner. Okay, well, that vid also gave you a Ledger Nano S. So since you didn't specifically mention it, I'm not 100% sure if you want it, buddy. But if you do, um, let me know, drop, you know, you know what to do. You have to go to my official uh, Telegram group, which is right here. It's free to join, or you have to uh, hit me up in my email. It's, uh, you know, you know my official email. It's in the about me. Um, and if I don't hear from you in 24 hours, then we'll, we'll, give, we'll give it away tomorrow, okay? So, but you are the winner for today. So that, that being said, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting please turn the bell notification on guys youtube keeps turning it off for some reason i don't know why um and people are missing out on my updates so yeah turn the bell notification on and that's it for today guys thank you so much